Hey, hey, Tony guys is here, now popping in. I'm in my little sound booth, so y'all got to forgive me at the location. You got these little sound booths, and it's late over here, so ain't nobody in the one next to me, and nobody on this side of the room, so I figure I'll be as safe as I can to shoot it over here, but forgive me, just got to listen a little louder, turn your volume up. Cause I can't be talking loud just in case. Just in case. Y'all remember that Jaheem song? Now listen to me. This one thing I was talking about last night, but I was in the dark because I ain't I was in the bed and I ain't feel like getting up, cutting no light on to talk about the brother. And one of the things y'all got to realize when I do these videos, for one, first and foremost, you got to get out your feelings. You got to get out your feelings. It's gonna be some stuff that is that'll sound a little offensive. It's gonna be different things, but everything, none of none of what I say is ever with malicious intent. It just is what it is. So if you sensitive, <laughs> which is like, you gotta understand, like you sensitive, this the wrong world to live in. Cause you can't even watch our news if you sensitive. You can't do nothing, you can't step outside, you sensitive. So you got to get out your feeling and just get the truth. And one thing I want to touch on is what we talking about is with the revenge of the nerds, the revenge of the lames. And this right here is what you about to start seeing and, and what you have to realize. That's why I tell you, you got to realize that when these lames on these podcasts talking, they don't even believe what's coming out their mouth. They don't believe what's coming out their mouth. And that's why you have to, for one, if a man got a platform and he does not have a wife, you already have to take his opinion with a grain of salt. I'm gonna say that again. If a man has a platform and he does not have a wife, you have to take his opinion with a grain of salt. Now, if he talking facts, meaning he talking verified numbers, statistics, you can listen to that. But when a man start talking his opinion, his beliefs, if he is over the age of 25, and he does not have a woman, a wife, first he need to have a woman. So if he got a woman, you could take that opinion and you could listen to it 50% of the way. If he ain't even got a woman, you can't even really listen to him. Because I'm gonna tell you, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, all of the races, ethnicities, all of it. A lot of these men is gay. I hate to break it to you, but a lot of these men is gay. And they calling it bisexual. They calling it bi-curious. They saying that they could do stuff with a man and that mean they not gay. I heard a white man said that he got drunk and got some head from a man. Got some oral from a man. Talking about because he was drunk and he was horny. You gay. You gay. All drunk mean is that you want to do you want to do more of what you want to do. That your inhibition was inhabilitated and your judgment meaning you knowing you would be judged was cut off i seen the video it went it was like a little viral video from white man and he was talking about um if a man is horny and he see a beautiful man he talking about a beautiful fit man or something like this and that man offered to give him some head. He talking about it's gay to turn it down. 
I say, boy, the devil is just. <laughs> I say, boy, the devil is just. The devil done took the gloves off. You hear me? The devil done took the gloves off. The devil throwing haymakers. You hear me? We had a hot pot. We went to a little Asian spot, and my son, he allergic to peanuts. And I, now I'm thinking, I'm thinking that was peanut sauce that was on the top that I mixed in there. And he took a couple sips of my soup. And boy, the thing got his stomach tore up. I don't know what it was, though. He texted me right now. Hopefully, he all right. He'll get to see how it feel to text somebody and not get a response. So, Lord willing, hopefully, he all right. But I got to get this video off. So, listen to me. Let me tell you like this right now. Oh, he says throat fine. Because, see, that throat will close up. You lurch or something, but he says throat fine. Just that stomach ache. So, he'll be all right. So booty. All that. Using the bathroom. But listen to me. These men out here, and this is a real thing. And see, this and this is what I try to tell y'all. This is how the devil works. See, the devil like to do that. You know that Superman meme? I think it's Superman or Spider-Man. And they pointing at each other. So when I talk about the gay epidemic of men, meaning, which is really down low men, they try to then say, oh, Tony, you gay. You must like men since you talking about it. That's the trick of the devil. That is the trick of Satan. Because, li listen, you don't talk about something that you is. You don't talk about something that you doing. I'm not finna be shining no light on these down, down low men if I was a down low man. Because if I was a down low man, that mean that it's a man out there that I'm dealing with. So if I'm out here talking about down low men, that'll be gaslighting the, the man. That man, he'll get fed up and just go on, come on out with videos, text messages, and that's what's happening. That's what you're seeing what happened with this here situation. All this right here, it's finna be more dirt diggalers what they used to call them back in the day the fudge packers just not to use no word and, and all that mean is just stuff and doodle cause doodle brown fudge is brown so that's all that mean that ain't no derogatory term cause that's literally what you doing you shoving doodle bike up in that man's system that's all you doing you were shoving doodle -doo back up in that man's system. And this is why a lot of that counts are happening. They keep talking about colon cancer and all that right here, prostate cancer. A lot of that probably is coming from the recompense that you receive in your body from man with man. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I personally... What could what good could come of a man having stuff shoved up in him? But see, this is what these men is getting into, and I'm gonna tell you why they're getting into it. They're getting into it because of perversion from Satan. They're getting into it because of porn. That porn is a rabbit hole. And they and even right now, with me being by myself, with me being by myself. As a grown man, I will not watch no porn. Even though I can't touch my wife right now, I will not watch no porn. You know why? Because I know it is addicting. I know because I could picture it. And I could see how that could be addicting. If you sit here watching two other naked people and they getting it on and you get you some lotion or some baby oil and you get to go on the town and that is what these demonic possessed men see a lot of these men don't understand that every not every evil spirit is gonna have you foaming at the mouth slobbing at the mouth and bouncing off walls these spirits they come in different levels so you got a spirit that will pervert you mentally and spiritually 
but yet still allow you to function daily. They think that, oh, if you demon possessed, you convulsing and rolling on the floor and foaming at the mouth. No, that's another type of demon. And a lot of time a person will go through that when that demon being called up out of them and is fighting to stay in them, it'll make a person convulse and foam at the mouth or what have you, or a strange uh, sound come from their mouth or they, they voice turn into a different sounding voice. I done seen it in church when a demon getting cast out of somebody when I was little and the lady was on the ground shaking and she started foaming at the mouth i ain't making this up now i ain't talking about no video i ain't talking i ain't making I, I don't tell you no lies i sit there and watch it with my own eyes this spiritual world is real that's why the people who believe in voodoo you if you know people who believe in voodoo and one of them get a spell put on them they be all kind of messed up they be all kind of messed up you know why voodoo real it's real if you believe in it it's real because see that's how spirits work see what a lot of people don't understand is that a spirit need an invitation even the holy spirit that's why we say the sinner's prayer to invite the holy spirit into our life a spirit needs an invitation see you see if a spirit didn't need an invitation then don't you think Satan would just inhabit every Christian? He don't have the authorization. But see, you give Satan the authorization to inhabit you with a spirit when you step outside of the will of God. So when you open your life up to porn, porn is satanic. And the reason why that spirit comes upon you, and this is what a lot of people don't realize about homosexuality. Nobody is born gay. They are raised gay, and it is an opening that invites that spirit. So parents who are not active and teaching their child the difference between a male and a female, a boy and a girl, the difference between the roles of a boy and a girl, a man and a woman, and then turning their child over to other people to raise, turning their child over to the phone to raise, to the magazines, to the video game, to whatever it is, turning their child over, and then Satan being in that media, and in that medium, he inhabits the life of that person and so when you see somebody because see this is what you got to understand about this if it does not move the story forward if you cannot move the story forward what it means is that there is a spiritual inhabitation that is trying to block you from advancing the kingdom from it moving the story forward. And this is, it's, it's painful stuff, man. It's painful stuff and it's painful for me to talk about it because I know people who are in this lifestyle. I know people, childhood, friends, family, people that I know personally. But what I'm talking about is this is affecting men now and it's affecting women too, but a lot of times women, they able to still go on. And after they done ate them a little bit of kudo, they able to still go on and get married. And they done did all kind of munching, but they, done, they able to go on and get married to a man. See, the thing with these men, a lot of men ain't able to do it. So that's why you see men who are eligible bachelors who appear to have it all and to look the part and to be the desire of millions of women, but the man still single. A lot of these men are embattled with their sexuality. It ain't even about women. 
It ain't even about not being able to find a wife. That's that's absolutely absurd. Because it's too many women. But it's just they get a grandiose idea of what a wife is. And while they stuck in that analysis paralysis, they start to indulge into the illicit, into that porn and other activities, and they end up getting trapped there. And that's the trick of the devil. That is the trick of the enemy. And a lot of people don't realize and understand what the adversary doing. So listen to me. This thing ain't real. It is real. You hear me? It's real now. And that's what's happening too. Like the boy from the podcast. The podcast called Fresh and Fit, I think. And the boy Fresh, who looked musky, he went and slept with a Chinese. Somebody said she Chinese. I ain't know what she was, cause she ambiguous. She could, but she got an accent, so I ain't know if she was Hispanic, like you know Puerto. Well, she could have been Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Chinese, but they say she Chinese. She kind of sound like it. I don't know if she ain't got no green card or if she got a green card and ain't got citizenship. He looked like he barely got citizenship, but I think he got citizenship. And so, and he sounds sometimes like he ain't got citizenship, but he went and slept with her. When she is the epitome of what he be talking bad about. He be talking bad about them, them kind of women that'll sleep with a man unprotected within a month and then get pregnant and trap the man because it's like she could go have a baby now she she looked like she lift weights and she lift all the weights she's not discriminating on now weight in the gym she lift all other weights and she want to keep that baby now because of that testosterone in her she probably could have thought she couldn't have no baby so that could be why she want to keep the baby, because she says she don't want to be with him. So it may be keeping the baby will give her citizenship if she ain't got it or something. I'm not sure. I don't know how that works. Or maybe she just need that that fitness business is not paying no bills. And she just, even if she could get her $2,500 a month off of Musky, maybe she feel like that's worth it. And then, and he said in the text message that they release that business might be over. It should be over when you out here sleeping with body whoppers. It shouldn't be another man that'll listen to him. But you know, the lame still gonna listen. But this is the thing: is these men they becoming agents of the devil? And so the reason why you see so many singles is because of the goal of the adversary is to keep people single. The goal of the adversary is to keep these people single because God is about unity. And think about this now. I want you to think about this now. Think about this now. Listen to me. And sit down and hear the words that I'm saying to you. I want you to think about this. And I want you to picture this. Picture this. You. You five years old. And you growing. Every year you get older. And you got a daddy. Who is strong. Who is smart. Who is loving who is kind, he is open, honest, transparent, and he provides. He is not afraid to work. He provides, and he protects. He builds. He does not destroy. 
he builds. He brings peace. He brings security. Picture that now. Picture you having that inner daddy. He don't add confusion to your life. He brings clarity to your life. When you got a question, you could sit down with daddy and you could talk to him. Picture having that in your life. Now picture mama. Mama is smart. She is strong. She is capable. She is loving. She is nurturing. She is kind. She is patient. And she is in sync with daddy. Mommy, daddy. Mama, daddy. She in sync with daddy. She in step with him. She bring peace to his life. She stabilize him. She bring favor to his life. She bring blessings to his life. She don't cause problems in his life. Imagine that. Now both of them, they loving you. And they loving your siblings, your brothers, your sisters, if you got them. They loving you. So now you got a roof over your head. You got food on the table. You got education, instruction. You got love, affection, attention. What you gonna, what you gonna do with that? What is you gonna do with that? Let, let, let me ask you this. If you have that, are you going to flourish or are you going to diminish? What you gonna do? How can you fail with that right there in your life? With mama and daddy in your life operating on that level? How can you fail? When you make a mistake, it's a mistake, not failure. When you make a mistake, you could come back home. And you got love. You got correction. But you got love. You got instruction. You got support. How can you fail? You got preparation and you got protection. Somebody try to do something to you? Your parents front line. They got your back. What kind of... I'm in Europe right now. In England, which is in Europe. Some of y'all ain't know that. I ain't know it either. Ain't even no London with England. Back in the day when I wrote my first book. And I'm with my son. My son turned 17, April 26. We're going to have a sale on TonyGasAcademy.com for him. All the course is going to be $26. Unless you get it right now because it's $17 for my 17th anniversary. See, this how I market. This is the marketing I do. Get a lesson in everything now. So listen, I'm over here for my son. My son getting a football experience. We call it soccer in America. They call it football over here. In the football experience. He in the train. He in virtual school. It, the work is hard. He's still taking advanced classes. He getting the train. He getting to see the world. He getting to have one-on-one -on -one time with his daddy. We went to two dental places. We went to one dental place tonight. I'm talking to him. I'm feeding life into him. Yeah, I'm going to be real with them. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, the truth going to hurt sometimes, but I'm also giving them life. I'm giving them instruction. We leave there, and then we go to another place where he want to eat at, and we sitting there, and we talking. Man to man, without his mama voice, because sometimes the mama voice, and, and ladies, y'all understand this, if you got a husband and you got a son, sometimes the mama voice mess stuff up because they be more softer or they be more selfish they want mama dream they want eh, this my little baby whereas daddy we trying to raise a man we want to put a foot on it behind and get them ready for the world we're not trying to nurture and baby and coddle and per preserve him for us we want to prepare him to send him out into the world whereas a lot of time mama want to Hold on to the baby. They don't want to let their baby go. But see, you got to listen. What I just described is what my sons have. And that's why they straight A students. That's why my son, still a virgin, never had a girlfriend. Say he might want to talk to a young lady in the 12th grade. Just for the experience. I told him don't rush it. Because a lot of these young ladies out here your age is bollywoppers. Take your time. 
God gonna send a woman for you at due, in due season. And so listen to me. Imagine if you had that. But now look at this baby that the boy must get in had. I mean, the, the guy in this woman. He blight. She Chinese. I'm over here in England. It's a lot of Chinese. It's a lot of Vietnamese. It's a lot of Korean. They don't even look at you. They don't even look at me. They don't. Now, some of them done looked at my son. I think he probably looked cool to them. But they is with they people. They is with they people. I have not seen one of these Asians with a black friend yet. Not saying that they racist. I ain't saying they racist, but what I'm saying is they with they people, they with they culture. That don't mean they racist. I have not seen one of these Asian young ladies with no black boyfriend yet. I done seen one with a white boy, but I ain't seen one with a black boy. She Chinese, if she Chinese, and he black, and I think he Haitian. So that's a unique black anyways. Every black that come from a different island, they have their own culture. They got their own culture. They got their own beliefs. They got their own ways. So now imagine this baby come in and the baby get 10 years old and like mom you know why doesn't dad come around often and the baby get online and the baby read the text messages and hear the voice notes that his or her daddy wanted him or her aborted I want you to let that sink in. I want you to let that sink in. The same way I just asked you to picture having that mama and that daddy, picture being 13 years old and getting online and seeing text messages of your dad asking your mom to abort you and your mama doing a rural tour like a thought bopper, bolly whopper, dumb idiot your mama doing a world tour promoting your abortion the desire of your daddy wanting her to end you picture that go back to 13 years old and picture that at that very point you want to take your own life at that very point if you were not a harlot you finna become a harlot if that very point, if you did not vape and smoke weed and pop molly and Percocet, you you looking for it all. You looking for it all. And then you got your dad over here. He look away. You got your mom over here. She look away. They came together. They made you. Your mama culture don't really care for your daddy culture. Your daddy culture don't really care for your mama culture, but they tolerate each other. Your daddy ain't got no relationship with your mama family. Your mama ain't got no relationship with your daddy family. How you gonna feel as a 13 year old growing up in this here world and you already going to school and having to suffer through colorist jokes different kind of jokes because you got your daddy nose you got your mama eyes and both of them have been picked on for their features growing up and now you got their features mixed and until you are seen as beautiful or handsome you getting picked on people giving all kind of little racist jokes they talking about your daddy and coming over on this kind of banana boat. They talking about your mama and they doing little racist stuff. 
all of this stuff, this real life. Now, don't y'all get in y'all feelings and think that I'm saying this stuff, but I'm just reminding you of what we already know to help you understand this is what a child go through. This is what a child go through. I remember my homeboy in school picking on my mama birthmark. My mama got a birthmark right above her lip, and it's like a, it's like a black square. It's a perfect little shape of a square. And it's right there above her lip. And it's just a color. It's just a color. It don't have any texture to it. It's not a mold. It's just a black thing. My grandma told us from, from a ham she ate when she was pregnant with a, you know how old country folks would make up anything about why you got a birthmark in a certain place. She know it was a ham she ate. But right now, my homeboy in school, hey, your mama got that thing on the lip. <laughs> hey, told the bubble like this. Because my mama got thick lips. That's why I got thick lips. Hey, told the bubble like this. He walk around doing the Shanae lips. And my mama cute. And then people, adult, as an adult, I got picked on by another man who seen my daddy. He was picking on my daddy um, pot belly. Hey, Tony, <laughs> boy, you better watch out, boy. That's your genetic. Boy, look at your genetic, boy. <laughs> I got picked on my whole life for the size of my head. Boy, your head so big, boy. You don't have dreams, boy. You have movies. Hey, I, my cousin will call me. Tony, uh, he a duck. He a duck. Hey, boy, you better turn on a blanker. A blanker light, boy, you turn your head. Man, you just can't be turning your head without a turn signal. Hey, Tony, boy, you look at your feet. Boy, you'll fall over. All kind of jokes about my head. So imagine if I had biracial parents. Imagine if my parents was double minorities. Because one thing you seen as a minority being black in America. But now if you black and you come from another country that wasn't like from slavery, then, so in school, if you a black person from an island, you get picked on double because your clothes might be different, your food might be different. They're cooking it in the house so you come to school with the smell of your food on your clothes and people from other countries went through a lot more than black americans as much as black americans went through it was other people from other countries who would go through even more because people would subconsciously look at it like oh you black and you you, you here but it's against your will oh you from this other country you came over here yourself Oh, we finna get you. And they just roasting them, roasting them, roasting them. And, and this what this man and this woman, they done come together. There's one thing, if they a team, if they a united front, and they loving each other, they in love, and they raise that biracial baby in love. That baby could flourish. That baby could come become Naomi Osaka. That's what Naomi Osaka is. She, I think she black and Asian. Look what she doing. Now, one thing I have not ever seen is every biracial person, they have their own unique experience. They go through their own certain set of identity crisis or like that journey, that search. They go through a lot. They go through a lot. And now, here you got this man who got millions of followers. And this woman who lived for all these weights. And she pretty. And I don't know how he looked because I'm a man. So I can't judge him. Because they're man ugly to me. But they could probably be coming together and be a great couple. Be a power couple. Raise that child in love. Gotta show that child the world. Take that child to Haiti. Take that child to China. Show that child the power and the strength of their cultures. And have them a super child. But see, the goal of the devil 
is to cause division. The goal of the adversary is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he destroying the mind of these men, destroying the mind of these women, having them procreate, reproduce. The woman don't want the man, the man don't want the woman, so not a child feel unwanted. And not a child have to go through the emotional abuse from the mama who have to bad mouth the dad and try to make the child hate the dad because the mama know that the child will naturally and organically and authentically love their father and their father ain't got to lift a finger. Their father ain't got to show up. Their father ain't got to be in their life. But when they get to meet their father, they're going to love their father. They're going to get through that tough conversation of why you weren't here and why you ain't do this. But then they're going to want to build with their father. And when they start building with their father, they're going to be around their father. So now the mom have to make it her goal to make her child hate the father so that the father don't get any attention or any love or any respect because of what he did to the mama. Even though she was a willing participant and was spread eagle, getting nutted in, she will act like she the victim and she innocent and she had nothing to do with getting pregnant and she gonna want her child to hate that, that daddy. And then that's gonna make the daddy hate the mama even more. So now the daddy may actually abuse the mama, mistreat her, dog her out, cuss her out. So now that message gets sent to the child. So now the child get to see relationships are messy, relationships are toxic, relationships are impossible. Love is impossible because the child get to say, if my own two parents can't love each other for me, then who gonna love me? See, this right there is what's not admitted to. People try to act like, oh, I was raised by a single parent. It had no effect on me whatsoever. I didn't go through anything. Oh, I am just, ooh, I'm successful. I'm rich. And I was from a single parent home. Yeah, you had to go through some stuff. And you had to overcome some stuff. And you had to muster the courage and the strength. And you had to take what you could take get what you could get from your parent that was there but you got to be real about your feelings you got to be real about what you went through in the dark you got to be real about your thought process you got to be real about how your parent that was there for you made you feel about them and how that made you feel about your other parent who was not there you got to be real about it let me get my little hit of wind in here got the hill boss boy got you in here hot boxing like that you pull a breeze in here so think about it this right here let me see what time it is because i'm okay 11 19. game's coming on 40 minutes so I'm, I'm i ain't gonna be too much longer though but i want you to listen to this and i want you to listen to this again listen to this again if you got distracted and you got right here, but you know you done missed some sentences, listen to the whole video again after this. The reason why, because I want you to be able to think about, picture, and realize the agenda of Satan. Because what this young man from this podcast who have millions of listeners, what he going through is what he has helped create in tens of thousands of other men life the very thing he is going through he has tens of other thousands of other men going through the same thing because of the way he talk about women and the way he portray women and the message that he pushes with his soft lame co-host both of them is soft and lame and the thing about that, that kind of man is they'll take your life before a real man will take your life. That's why it's dangerous speaking on lames because the most dangerous thing on the face of the earth is an insecure man. 
the most dangerous thing on the face of the earth is an insecure man. That's why P. Diddy got bodies on him, allegedly, from being insecure. That's why he had them parties that he would have from being insecure. The most dangerous man on the face of this planet is an insecure man. A confident, sure of himself man, he won't bother you. You won't have a problem out of him unless you threaten his life, his livelihood, or his life. That's the only time you're going to have a problem out of him. But an insecure man will take, you, will take your life for saying his name. And for so long, people would always say, Tony, why you don't say names? Why you don't say names? Because I understand what they don't understand. An insecure man who is inhabited by a demonic spirit will be led to take your life because they will hate you that much for speaking the truth about them and their situation. And one thing about the devil, the devil don't want the truth to get out. That's why it's so much death in the music industry and all of that, the secular worldly industry, because that's what Satan do. The spirits that he uses to inhabit humans takes life. And, and that is expressly why the Bible says we wrestle not in flesh and blood. Why do you think that was written? Because what the Bible is trying to say is, listen, y'all fighting and killing each other, but that's not where the fight is. The fight is in here. The fight is spiritual. You're wrestling against spirits and principalities in high places. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And this is what people don't understand. People don't understand that the agenda of Satan is very sneaky and very sly. It, it comes in the form of a podcast. It comes in the form of a song. It comes in the form of a lover. It comes in the form of a movie. The plan of Satan is to put the wool over your eyes, to pull the wool over your eyes so you don't see what's about to hit you so that you fall for it. So guess what? And this and this is how the devil works. The devil will bring two humans together and he'll bring them together in sin and have them create a child that go do the Sandy Hook or the Columbine or the Boston Marathon or the Unabomber or the 9-11. The devil will have a couple raise a child in vitriol and self-hate and confusion and in the opposite of the Holy Bible so that they could create mass destruction either one by one with the people that they claim to love like they who they date who they sleep with or in masses like the boy who shot up the church and took them lives think about think about it the hate that the devil instilled the message that he instilled think about it's the thing. See, a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people don't realize this. But almost every white person listen to a black artist. But you probably got less than half of black people who listen to a white artist. Let me help you understand something. This ain't this ain't about you know racism or anything, but I want you to understand. Uh, think about the power of hip hop. Think about it. Think about the power of rhythm and blues. I got a white friend who did a whole jazz and blues album. He want to do a whole documentary on black people music. 
He is not the least bit concerned with white people music. He is so perplexed and just enthralled and enthralled with black people music. Think about it, black culture. Think about the way these kids dress today. Think about it. So why do you think that people, that group of people was made slaves in every part of the world? That if your skin looked like this, and there's some people whose skin who don't look like this was made slaves, but if your skin looked like this, you was a slave in every part of the world. Why? Because the adversary made people who don't look like this hate people who look like this because he knew that this is one of God's chosen people. And if that if this group of people can get it together and can believe on Jesus Christ and can walk in their divine prominence, in their divine destiny, in their divine purpose, that Satan's agenda will be upended. See, that's why he want me. Because what I just brought, what I, what did I just illuminate to you? That now, that's why, why you think it's called the Illuminati? Because they stealing the light. They claiming to be the light. Because God is the light. So that's why everything the devil do, he want to claim to be the light. Because he want to steal the light. Think about it. Why do you think black people were slaves in America? And slaves in the islands? And slaves in different places? And how even black people sold black people for, for the love of money? That's the goal of the adversary. To trick the hearts and the minds of humans to make us go against the will of God. And if if the adversary can break down the family if the adversary can make daddy hate mama that's going to make the child hate themselves and then the child going to go out and do self destructing behavior because of their self hating parents and it's a trickle down effect that the devil has put in place and we don't want to hear it and that's why messages like this right here get suppressed that's why messages right here it get watered down by people thinking it's funny or certain little things and or well, they try to turn it into a joke which you could have a sense of humor and talk about you know revenge of the lames but you still got to get the message and make sure you don't miss the message. Why are we talking about musty men and manly women trying to get over on each other? He wanted him some free coup de bell with no repercussions. And she want her baby for whatever reason. And honestly, I don't think the woman want the baby. I don't think the woman want the baby. I think now she's going to probably have to keep the baby because she done went out. So now if she don't have the baby, she might get rid of the baby and then just tell the rural it was a miscarriage. That, that's what a lot of times what they do. Oh, it was a miscarriage. Child, stop lying. Y'all forgive me. I don't like to have no swig or what on no camera. Little pet pee. So listen to me. I'm about to have to get out of here because I'm about to start. I'm starting to, I'm starting to sweat like a Negro at a can, Klan rally. So I got to get on out of here. But I want you to think about that. Think about that. I watched a documentary where they got real audio and all the documentation from the FBI or whatever. I think it was the FBI, what they did on Martin Luther King, 
Why do you think the devil wanted Martin Luther King? Because of what he was trying to do. And he was trying to do it in the name of the Lord. And that's why the devil jumped on him so hard and had him allegedly in them orgies and threesomes and men, women, cheating on his wife. And then why you think <laughs> America is the FBI? Why do you think they put a Martin Luther King Jr. Street in every city in America? Probably, as, I don't know if they got them in the real, real white cities, but every city I done went in, I done seen a Martin Luther King. After they know the audio that they got on him, they made him our idol. Knowing how he was living his life. But they said, we gonna do this to make y'all think we gave y'all something. But who we giving y'all really wasn't worth nothing. Because he wasn't, he, he wasn't a man of integrity. This this what they believe. They say he wasn't a man of integrity. Watch the documentary. I think it's on Hulu. They say he wasn't a man of integrity. They basically say he was a low life. Basically say he was a, a fraud, a liar. They basically say he was P. Diddy. They basically say he was P. Diddy. And But the people did not know all of what they knew. They started trying to leak it, but nobody really wanted to share it and report it because of the movement. And so the slap in the face was, we finna give you this fallen soldier. We finna give you who we believe to be a false man of God. We gonna let this be y'all icon. We ain't got nothing on Malcolm X. Even though he was Muslim now, and I'm not Muslim. They say they ain't had nothing on Malcolm. They say they 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 say Malcolm was like a saint compared to Martin Luther King. They say they, they ain't had no cheating or none of that on Malcolm. But they say we finna get this man that we think is a false leader, a false prophet, a false teacher of God. We finna get him a statue and we finna get him a street and everything. So for us, yeah, it's like a good thing. Yeah, you on our black man. We got the Martin Luther King Day. We got the Martin Luther King Parade. Yeah, we got Black History Month in February. Y'all honoring us. But you know, but that's not how they felt about him. They felt he was a liar and a deceiver and a cheater and a womanizer and a low life. They didn't think that he was a good man and a man of integrity. Because of the information they had on him. They calling him a communist and all this stuff. Go watch the documentary. They showing the real footage from back then. This ain't the scripted show now. The scripted show is produced by Blithwood, Gina Prince, who did Love and Basketball. So they tried to save him and spare him and put him in a good light to combat this doc this unscripted this documentary so what i watched on the other show i ain't really seen nothing yet but that documentary they got right on in i'm like whoa what k was out here so then i went to thinking like well darn if mlk was out here flipping and tossing and got all these streets named after them and won a new nobel peace prize then what am i doing being faithful they had me questioning my leadership. I'm like, do I need to be out here flipping and tossing? But see, that's the trick of the enemy. That's what the devil want us to do. That's what he want us to think. And see, that's why the people that God really called, a lot of times we don't get no street name. We don't get no praise. We don't get no Nobel Peace Prize. When you really with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be embattled. You're going to be hated. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be talked about. But the one thing about it is God got you and God going to give you peace. 
God will give you peace, but you can't expect peace to come from the world. You can't expect praise and accolades and respect and appreciation and gratitude from the world because the devil is in there. And the devil is doing that over there. But see, the people who the devil actually use, he'll have them get the promotion. He'll have them get the prize. He'll have them because he have people in position to do things. And the reason why the devil do what he do is because he say he wants you to be comfortable in sin. So when you in that sin, he going to give you that Nobel Peace Prize. When you in that sin, he going to give you that street name. When you in that sin, he going to have his minion, his people, give you a promotion, give you a raise, give you the award. Because he wants you to, to look yourself in the mirror and say, you know you in willing sin. But yet you still winning in the world because he don't want you to come out that sin. So he used his people who is gatekeepers and door holders and he used them to unlock and open doors for you that he got access to to keep you in your sin. So just like these two young men on this podcast, the devil take and pervert the mind of millions of people and bring them those perverted minds and let them steward and guide and lead these broken, hurting, lost, confused people. And he give them this message and he take their self-hate and their failures and their pain and their disdain for the women who have lied to them or overlooked them or hurt them or cheated on them. He take that and he manipulate it and he use it and he have them lead and steward millions of others. And in that they make millions of dollars. So if you make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars from a toxic message of division and promoting fornication and adultery, but yet you have money, you have fame, you have admiration and adulation, you're not going to change. And the thing about it is, they will have more seemingly than those of us in the body of Christ. They're following will be bigger than those of us working for God. Their money will be longer than those of us working for God. And that's where, but when you know God, you know what they got ain't gonna last. So I'm gonna ask you this question. Would you rather get $10 million knowing that you're gonna spend it, knowing you're gonna live, knowing you're gonna ball out, or get a hundred thousand dollars for the rest of your life would and see that's how the devil work he'll give them millions of dollars millions of followers and then destroy them but the way the lord have us the lord have us just quietly kept we we, we just blessed and highly favored but it's just it's under the radar you blessed you got what you need your your needs are met and you good, and you got longevity. You might not have all the fame. You might not have all the friends. You might not be liked the most. You might not have everything, but you good. God got you. And you know who brings tomorrow, even though you don't know what tomorrow will bring. And that's the difference. So listen to me. The devil busy, and there is a movement. And you got to start praying. You got to read your Bible. You got to be prayed up so that you can be spiritually aware. And so that you will have spiritual discernment to know what's being done. To know what's going on out here. Hey, this Tony Gaskin did not be to talk a whole hour. When I get on here, I want to go 15 minutes. But the Holy Spirit is such a well of wisdom and just such a well that... I literally, if I could get some food and drink one day, I might do a full day, eight hours, man. And just do, it. just go deep, just intercessory, just all the way. But it's too much for right now because we got to get there spiritually. Hey, 
God bless you. Make sure you get on over there, TonyGasAcademy.com, where ain't no scams, ain't no frills, just the real. God bless you.